I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Unknown MMA. Everything you don't know about MMA. Okay, so I'm Amanda Sanchez, also known as Chica with Unknown MMA. Um, I'm here with Erin from Female Fight Fans. And we're so excited to kind of just talk to each other about our websites and give a little more insight on the backstory behind both of ours. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and same here. Thanks so much, Amanda, um, for having me. And I'm here with Amanda Sanchez from UnknownMMA.com. Um, and yeah, we kind of both just interviewed each other about our different ventures. Um, we've kind of been connected from sort of the beginning of both of our projects. So yeah. it's cool yeah. now that uh, <laughs> we're, yeah, a little bit more established. And you hadn't even launched yet when yeah. I first talked yeah. to you. So um, yeah, now you're like fully up and running and you have a podcast. And uh, yeah, so super excited to delve more into all of your answers. Yeah, it's so crazy, like, everything, like, whenever we first talked, I was, like, not even sure about the name, and I have, like, <laughs> what, like, three months later, I think, now we have everything running, we have a bunch of articles on our site already, it just kind of started very quickly. <laughs> I know, yeah, so how has that been, because I know... Like, when I first started, I felt like it was just so much chaos trying to, like, find writers and then actually, like, and manage everybody and, you know, edit all the pieces and publish everything and um, be active on social media. So how is all of that kind of going in terms of, like, you know, you sort of being, like, at the helm of everything? It's kind of crazy because um, whenever I first started it, I mean, I'm in graduate school, but I didn't want to be just writing for the website like I wanted to have other people's voices too um because I just didn't I didn't want just my perspective so uh, I've been getting I actually found uh, a handful of writers that are really great from Twitter surprisingly and uh my friend Rory he's like I love his writing style so um finding those people that kind of mesh well with the the idea of the site is is really cool and really fun um yeah, it's so chaotic. Yesterday, I was actually, I was finally getting back to emails from, like, November 30th. I'm like, I'm so sorry. But I got busy with, like, the photo shoots and the interviews and stuff. So I was just kind of like, I need to put it on the back burner to get, like, this this stuff out before these guys were fighting. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely, a lot of it is timing, too, because especially, I think, in sports, but especially, like, MMA, because everything happens, like, so quickly, that <laughs> the timing is, is such a crucial part of the whole operation. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. So, um, you want to talk a little bit about female fight fans and how yeah. that's been going? I mean, you started a while before I did. Yeah, so I started, like, the whole sort of, like, idea and initial, like, I should do this was about a year ago, because it was, yeah, it was, like, the new year of 2018, and then it actually launched in, like, April because um, I was lucky enough I got to work with um, one of my friends who uh, sort of also works in, like, because my day job and, like, my sort of career path is in, like, uh, content creation, writing, like, online marketing. And so one of my friends who um, also is, yeah, kind of in that same world was looking to sort of add website uh, building to her resume and needed uh, some portfolio projects to be able to show potential clients and so she wanted to uh, work on a couple things like for free um, was kind of just like reached out to her network to see if anybody was interested in like having a website built and so it was just kind of the perfect perfect yeah. timing perfect storm and then so I worked with her and so she built my whole website for me uh, which oh, is great because that's like one thing I hate is website building <laughs> <laughs> I love it I, have, I feel like I've built so many websites I love doing websites oh, like you're very opposite of me in that sense um like you're so like techie and I'm like even though I'm like I work on the internet and I love online like that's so not my thing so um yeah and then April was when it actually sort of then like I think March I would say is when everything was done and then I was like okay let me bring some writers on board and like kind of build up the content and it was around I think it was UFC 223 no there's no 
223? The Brooklyn one that happened in April. I don't know. It, wait, it was 223. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we just had 233. Okay. That would make sense. So, um, yeah. And then that was kind of the launch point. And so we've been like in existence officially for like eight months or so. Um, and yeah, it's definitely been kind of like a roller coaster. It feels like a long, like almost longer than that, but like shorter at the same time yeah. because <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you get it. There's just so many like moving pieces and I definitely launched like full force where I was like, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to have writers. I'm going to write for the site. I'm going to have a podcast. I'm going to have merchandise. Like I'm going to do like literally everything possible. Um, and it was definitely like it was overwhelming and like a lot to take on but I feel like I've gotten a little bit better at um like prioritizing and um like focusing on like one specific thing before like moving on to the next thing um because yeah that definitely was like it was hard to kind of keep up with like all the different aspects of it and to like do everything really well um so yeah, it's been really good though. Um, I've definitely like been enjoying it, and I feel like I've learned so much from the whole process. Yeah, it's it's interesting because this is the first like blog type thing I've done. Like I'll, I have my photography studio, my acting studio, um, and I, so I built a bunch of websites for those different things. And um, it's like so different doing a blog. And I'm I'm I don't like calling it a blog because that sounds like I mean everyone's <laughs> no, a blog. Right. Like it's more I try to like, frame it as more of a <laughs> yeah, like a like a news website type of a thing. Publication, yeah. A publication, yeah. That sounds a lot better. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's a, such a learning experience uh, figuring everything out as as you're doing it, and it's like coming live and stuff. So it's it's interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I want to also talk a little bit about like the the why and the reason behind creating the website because um, I know that you initially wanted to find and like even how we found each other like you were looking to find other female MMA fans and then it kind of evolved from there from like femme MMA into like the unknown MMA concept um but I I know it's a similar the whole kind of uh lack of female voice behind MMA content was kind of the inspiration and sort of what initially got you interested. So talk to me a little bit more about like the whole journey of what yeah. it really inspired you to create the website. Yeah. I mean, if you've been to uh, an MMA event, you go and like the guy's line is super long and the girls like, that's the only place that you go. And the girls restroom line is like so easy to get into. <laughs> like there's no line because there's no girls. Like the girls that are there are like, either super fans or they're there because their husbands took them and so whenever I was trying to um find female fans on um Twitter I started looking I was finding I was just looking for fans because I followed mostly people from like locally and people that I knew like that and so I was like I need to find people who are following uh on Twitter so I started finding a bunch of people and like for every 15 guys there was like one girl and like sometimes they weren't even real profile. <laughs> Like, I know this isn't a real person. So then I started, like, the hashtag Femme MMA, and I started finding women. And I was like, you know what? This could be really cool for, like, to hashtag it. And so then we can find more females. And so that's part of the website. And it's not the pri- the primary um, focus of the website anymore. But so I do have Femme MMA on there, and it's, a, like, a forum. And I need to get it. I need to publish a little bit more on it to actually get girls engaged, but I want it to be where we can find other women because I do think we have a unique perspective when it comes to fighting. And I love your question about what does it mean to you to fight like a girl? It's like, oh my God. I was like, I kept typing and typing. I was like, this is so, I I love that question. Um, So yeah, it, it all stemmed from that. And going to a fight, I was like, I need to figure out how I'm gonna be in this space because I love it so much. Like it was a quick, like, instant passion as soon as I went I told my boyfriend I was like this is what I need to be doing like I need to be part of this because I love it so much so um it was kind of that segue into okay I'm going to create this website for females and then I was like well what if I just create a whole news outlet like sort of news out- outlet um for fans who who love the sport and for people who are just kind of getting into it Yeah, I love that. Um, And I love how, and I think it's smart to kind of make that part of the concept and um, Mm -hmm. not the whole thing and making it like a forum and something that's like 
part of the conversation, but I love that you're kind of even delving past that into like the other aspects and even, and I think it even goes with, cause I think one of the misconceptions is that like females aren't really into it. And yeah. you know, the whole thing of unknown MMA is like kind of, I think busting a lot of like stereotypes or just kind of delving deeper than like these very like one noted kind of answers or notions that people have. And I feel like that's like such a big part of it, but you know, there's more, obviously like more to MMA than just that and more misconceptions than just that but I think it's a good even way to like pull people in and like get them interested but then you know you have so much more even to offer in terms of content and perspective and all of that stuff yeah and I was really I was really excited whenever you reached out to me for the first podcast that we did together because I was like oh my god this is exactly what I want to do like female fight fans it's like that's what I was looking for that's exactly what I was looking for so it was a really cool um it was, it's really cool to me that that was my first, like, podcast experience and, like, us talking about everything because it's, like, I feel like our brands mesh together so perfectly. I agree. Oh, that's so sweet. And I'm so glad to know that. Um, yeah, I, I 100% am in agreement. I feel like they really, like, complement each other well. And maybe, like, let's talk about the fighting like a girl thing since you brought that up. Because, um, yeah, I ask that to everybody. Um, and I'm yeah. just, like, looking at your answer um, cause I, like, <laughs> I love what you said about being strong in your decisions and like handling defeat with your head held high. Cause I feel like that the whole idea of like setbacks is, I, I feel like there's so much like in MMA, but even just in general, like stigma around like failure. Um, and you know, you see things where like people are really hyped up and they're doing so great or they're on like this really great win streak or even just like personally you know like everything is going great and then something happens and um you know it's hard to like not feel like okay everything is falling apart or like I have to like hide the fact that this thing didn't work um you know (laughs) and and even like in the whole like sort of like startup world right that's a whole thing too like you know because I'm sure like you know I know I've made like tons of mistakes and um but you know you kind of you learn everything and it's all about like how you go forward from that and 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 Mm -hmm. perceive it versus like the actual thing itself um so yeah so I would love to just like know like expanded on that um like just more of your thoughts of um that like resiliency and like even the how the feminine aspect kind of goes into that yeah I feel like so um when I hear like fight like a girl I think of just like being mentally strong like because we do have uh the emotional a little bit more we're a little more in tune with our emotions and that's not uh obviously that goes back to patriarchy and all that we're not going to tear them down right now but (laughs) um yeah I feel like it's being resilient and being strong and facing those those adversities and those challenges and being able to come back from them because yeah every like I love the example of cyborg like when she lost it was like all right this happened now what are we doing next like let's make a joke out of it let's just we're I'm gonna keep fighting it's not like it's the end of the world I lost I learned and now let's move on so I kind of feel like with every experience of loss and and fighting like a girl means coming back from those losses stronger and believing in what you're doing enough to be like, okay, I messed up. Let's figure out how to fix it and just keep going. I love that. I totally agree. (laughs) I I love that question. It's funny because we both have like that specific question that we both ask because in my interviews, I'm always like, what's something like unknown that people might not know about you um, that like your fans don't know? And so I have like that little signature question and you have your, what does it mean to fight like a girl? And I love it so much. Ah, I do too. And I think when you have a signature too, I think it makes you like stand out and memorable and even just like to your audience, right? It's like you um, establish yourself in this like particular area and people come to um, expect that and sort of associate you with it. So I think like it's really smart in like five or six different ways. (laughs) Um, But I love that too. Um, And so let's talk a little bit about like, I don't know, like balance and like, you know, having this stuff and also doing other things. Cause obviously like for neither of us, this is not like our full-time job by any means. Um, 
because I have a day job. Um, I do get to work from home, which is like amazing, but I do still have like, you know, a nine to five kind of job. Um, and I freelance um, and do other things like that too, because I like edit manuscripts for people. I do a lot of freelance writing. Um, so lots of like content creation sorts of things. And you have, so I feel like you do <laughs> much more than I do though, because you're a grad <laughs> student. You also have your, um, your photographer, but then also have like your, um, your studio and teach acting classes and um on top of all of the unknown MMA and um just like all the stuff that you do so like talk a little bit about like you know what is a day in your life like and how do you kind of like juggle all of these different roles and expectations yeah so balancing oh god I don't even know honestly like with grad school I kind of was like I was out of undergrad for two years, and then I was like, you know what, my, my little brother, he's younger than me, um, he was going into undergrad. So I was like, well, we had already always planned on going to school at the same time, like, I'll go to grad school in every year in undergrad. And so I kind of decided just one day, I was like, I'm just going to apply, like, let's just see what happens. And so I applied, and I got in, and I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to grad school. So it just kind of happened. And then this MMA stuff came up I was a, a semester into uh, my program and then I started going to fights and stuff and I started like ba trying to balance it and so I, I have my acting studio I try to schedule everything on like one specific day so it's not um, too overwhelming and then um, my photography kind of just comes as it as it goes and um, then balancing the unknown MMA it's kind of just like finding time to read the articles and that's a big deal of me being able to find people to do it because I'm just editing and I kind of do that in my acting studio already because we work on scripts and monologues and stuff. So I'm used to being like the editor. Um, so I'm not having to actually sit down and do all that research. And then this upcoming semester, I don't know if you read, but uh, I'm doing an independent study research project and that focus is all MMA. So it's really cool. Like if you see my syllabus, like the description says like research on mixed martial arts and I'm like that's so cool uh, so so this semester I'm actually going to be able to do some of my unknown MMA work while I'm I'm studying for school so I'm really excited about that that's great yeah it's, it's a weird balance and I'm sure you understand kind of just finding the time um like with your website to fit in work while you're you're doing your other job yeah um and I it it definitely is it's challenging and I love what you said about and I think that's really smart to a like kind of time batch as some people call it where instead of like going from one thing to another thing and like having your focus kind of pulled all over the place and because I think that's a lot of the overwhelming part is like you know you have to go from this mode into this mode into this you know and like oh how do I have time to like prep for each of these things and um, it, it versus like if you dedicate like this block of time like just to like this task because even like for me today um, like today is like my call day so I, like all my calls are like happening today pretty much for the week so I'm not gonna have to like do all of what goes into all of you know, and it's kind of like all over the board in terms of what they are from this to like meetings but you know all calls so that it's like okay I can sit down get through these phone calls and like kind of exercise that part of my mind and then tomorrow will be a day where like I don't have any calls or meetings so it'll just be like writing and like really heavy like content creation because it's hard to like go from like all right I have this hour to like you know bang out this article and it, it, it's definitely I think more difficult that way versus if you like batch it so um yeah and, and that's so great that you're I actually didn't know that about your independent study thing this semester so that's that's so cool and it really it's like you really can literally kind of combine like what you're doing because yeah definitely like finding the time is I think the hardest part especially because you do have to keep up with so much of what's going on and there is like there's so many fights there's so many fighters like it just to kind of like be able to like know everything that's happening and like it's it, it takes just so much research and you know just that alone is 
um, it, it's time consuming. And I think for me, I'm a little different in the sense of like my career is so is like not really MMA based. And I think my challenge even for this year is like to do a little bit more of what you're doing, where it's like being more purist in terms of the skill and then sort of like making the topic more based around that um because like my day job and my and I think part of that's like because I never this was so different than any other passion I've ever had so like my day job is in like health and technology so it's super different and in terms of like but it's you know I mean you could put MMA in there I'm sure but like Mm -hmm. it's super different in terms of like the things I'm like thinking about doing writing about um and even like in like freelance projects I, I did a big project recently where I edited a manuscript for someone um, that was, like, a memoir, essentially. So, which is very different um, than, like, MMA topics. So, yeah. um, I think for me, it's, like... And I, I, I do have a lot of interest, like, I think, in general, because I love... Um, there's so many... I love, like, psychology. I love, like, astrology. Like, just all, like, very... And so, I think a lot of it for me is, like, how do I sort of balance all these different interests and even just things like I want to read about or do that have nothing to do with work or female fight fans um for sure because it's a lot yeah. and, it's, and it's so hard to actually like stop working especially when you have your own business like yesterday I was working like I was sitting on a climber reading articles making edits and stuff and then I'm like oh my god it's like 8 30 <laughs> like I have been working literally all day on this stuff and you don't even realize like you forget to stop to eat you forget to like focus on other things and it's so easy just to keep working and working that I think finding time setting up a a schedule with yourself to actually stop is important too which I'm sure you have the same issues with it's like if I'm on the computer I could be doing this I could be doing this and it's just like stop just sit down and don't think about like any of your work for a little bit because it's like your mind's always going crazy even like social media like if I'm on Twitter it's about MMA and if I'm on Facebook it's about like my acting studio so it's like finding the time to step away from it is is a challenge in itself totally yeah it definitely is and I think especially because a lot of times like when you're like all right I'm like I'm shutting off you like go on the internet or (laughs) right and it's like so you're kind of being like pulled back in even if you're not intending to be yeah. And I think definitely for me, I try to do things all, like I try to do at least one activity that's like doesn't involve a computer or my phone every day. And I yeah. feel like that really helps me to like totally actually disconnect where it's like my phone is not even like anywhere near me. So I do like I love yoga um, and meditation. So I do like tons of like classes and things like that. And it's so and I, I literally love the aspect of like I'll never bring my phone like into the studio like I'll always like leave it like where my bag is and so it's like not even like anywhere like nobody can even reach me I'm not gonna see anything until like this hour is over or even just like working out or doing some kind of like boxing class or doing some kind of um something where I'm not like attached to my phone because even like if I'm running or something like you know I have my music on or whatever and I'm still <laughs> like <laughs> you know you're, yeah you're on it, you know so it, it's like the finding or if I'm you know just like meeting someone for coffee or whatever but I try to like intentionally do something where I'm not on my phone for a certain time or my computer so that it's like I can actually like get away from all of that stuff and like actually take a break (laughs) I don't know if you see I I started doing puzzles um and so I'm actually able to like sit down and just focus on the puzzle I'll have like a there's this podcast that I listen to and it's like a comedy show but it's also like about serial killers so yeah my answers are all over the place too so I'll have that on and I'll be doing my puzzle but I'm I get so focused on it that I'm like, that's all I want to do for like three days instead of like. <laughs> I totally get that. Oh my god, because that's how because I'm like such a big reader. Like that's my other I think thing where like I and like, how I disconnect. Um, mm-hmm. And I try to do like physical books versus an e-reader most of the time. So. And yeah, like, but if I start a really good, I'm like, okay, I have to finish it. Like, I, keep like, I literally, I just finished a book earlier this week in like two days because I'm the same exact way. Yeah, I'm like, I need it. Nothing done for two days. Yeah. Problem. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Exactly. I'm good. I'm not the only one. No, yeah. For sure not. And that's like, yeah, it's like, okay, now my distraction has become a distraction. Yeah, and it's like, I'm like, I'm such a nerd. I'm like taking a break, like I'm off of school right now and I'm like, okay, I need to read at least one book for fun. And it's like, stop reading. That's all I do during the year, during the semester. And I'm just like, I need to read one book. Uh, I'm such a big, yeah, I love reading. I've always loved it, like from, from like a really young age and I just... Yeah. Never, because I feel like most people, like, got away from it, and even, like, you know, like, well, they'll, you know, you go on Instagram instead of, like, reading something, and I I still, like, I, I always, like, I can't not, um, I don't know, I'm always, like, I'm never, like, not reading something, like, if I don't have a book that I'm, like, eat in the middle of or like even if I had like five pages in it I almost feel like naked where I'm like okay I need to yeah. like, go oh my God, something, start something. Yeah. right no I'm the same way yeah um so let's see what should we talk about maybe next? like uh our goals for the year. yeah okay yeah for sure yeah um, so you can go first because I feel like I've been talking a lot <laughs> okay oh my gosh I was thinking that I was like oh my god I was like rambling for like 10 minutes um <laughs> So goals, yeah, because it's a new year. I feel like this is even the the time of year where everybody thinks about, like, what are their intentions? What do they want to accomplish? Um, and I'm really excited for this year. Last year, it's weird. I have this um, – I, I was, like, thinking back around New Year's to, like, the past few years. And for some reason, all the odd number years have gone, like, super well for me. And I hate odd numbers, weirdly. Um, but <laughs> I like even numbers, but like, yeah. I was like, 2015 was like amazing. 2016 was awful. 2017 was like, 2018 was awful. So I'm like, okay, this is kind of, <laughs> like, it should follow the pattern and be a good year. Um, it's cause last year I feel like I was just, I don't know. I had like so many more, I feel like I almost like overshot myself though, where I was like. I, you know, and where you, like, sort of have goals that are too lofty, and then you don't meet them, and then you're like, oh, I feel terrible, but you still accomplish things, it's just that you didn't frame it correctly, I feel like that was a lot of, like, me last year, um, and so this year, I, I really want to, well, I think, and biggest, biggest goal, really, I, I decided to set, like, one larger goal, and, like, break it into smaller goals, um, and cause typically for me, I'm the type of person that has like 10 different goals. So like, it's really hard for me to pick like just one to focus on. Um, but definitely getting some kind of, um, investor, some kind of like sustainable financial funding, which I imagine would be like someone giving me money, but, um, I'm like, I don't know what else that would be, but I'm open. Um, I guess it could be like a grant or something, but, um, yeah some kind of like if a financial source so that I can really grow because I definitely think like the biggest obstacle especially to like really large growth or exposure is definitely like money and I think that that's true for like probably most people or most people that have blogs or startups or whatever um and especially in this day and age where I hate people like when people are it, the market's so saturated but it's just the tools make it a lot harder to get organic exposure because it's it's so like paid to play you know like you can't start a Facebook page yeah. anymore and like grow it like you give Facebook av advertising money in order to have any shot and yeah. um, it, unfortunately yeah that seems to be like pretty much all of the platforms yeah. online <laughs> absolutely yeah are just moving in, in that direction and so it's just so much harder to like actually leverage yourself and grow organically um and so definitely getting some kind of like financial source where I can do that I think is and even in terms of looking at like the future of um because definitely like if this could be my full-time job that would be amazing so um and you know as you know like you can you know you just can put more into it right so um that's definitely the goal and um that's definitely like my biggest trajectory for this year is to um sort of get myself to that place and even in terms of like um you know just kind of knowing my stuff in terms of like being able to talk about female fight pans in a way that's like attractive to people and where they can see like the potential in it and you know like why it makes sense for them to invest and why it would be a good business decision so that's definitely like my biggest goal for this year um, um and i want to know um more about your goals and like what are you hoping to accomplish in 2019 yeah. uh, so <laughs> 
Okay, so my goals for 2019, I, I don't really like resolutions because I feel like you can make change any day you want. Like, you don't have to wait for a new calendar. I think it's it's so dumb to me. But 2019, I actually do have some goals because uh, I'm supposed to graduate in May. So I want to hurry up. I wish I could fast forward. I want to hurry up and finish that. That's my main goal is finish that while also having the MMA stuff going. Um, I think I can kind of figure out my schedule to where I'm, I'm still doing the MMA stuff um, well enough during my um, studies. And so that's my main thing is being able to get free from school and be able to travel for shoots and figuring out my schedule and stuff so that I'm able to go like to different gyms and stuff and get interviews with fighters, get pictures with fighters. Um, because all the guys that I've interviewed uh, recently have been um, from Texas, which is actually really cool. Because um, Diego's from far Texas and then... Um, Eric Anders uh, is from Texas. He, he went to high school here, but he doesn't live here anymore. But he came down to Alex's gym, so I was able to do a shoot. Yeah. And then, so I'm just kind of getting lucky that the guys from Texas are super nice. I think it's because they're Texans. So <laughs> they're all, like, willing to, to talk with me, which is really cool. So um, I do, I want to do more fighters, like, outside of Texas, too. Oh, um, yeah, that's so probably cool. Probably, like, the second half of the year is going to be one of my schedules for you. <laughs> but yeah, I have some goals to get more shoots, more interviews. Um, by the end of the year, I want to be able to start delegating where um, I can give some of my staff interviews and then you just get them for them and then they can conduct the interview and then I can put that up. So it's not just me the whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah, that's I love that. Um, and yeah, I feel like Texas is a really big fight place or where like MMA and combat sports are really big so it definitely like makes sense but yeah I think that's all really cool and definitely like good goals to have and um yeah especially I love all your portraits and I feel like that's one of my favorite parts of the work that you do is like it's seeing those and um yeah it's so cool and I love the way that you capture them and I don't know. I feel like it's different than most media members just because most of them, it's just a little bit more like literal or like, you know, so they have a picture to go in their article. But since you're a photographer, it's like there's a more artistic aspect to it. And um, I feel like you really like capture their spirit and like who they are. Um, So, yeah, I love that. Thank you. I was I was so worried during um, Alex's um, because he had told me afterwards, like, He's like, all right, let's do this shoot real fast. I'm kind of frustrated. Like, he had gotten cut during during his practice, so he had, like, a gash on his eye. And I was like, okay, like, I know you're frustrated. It's fine. And then we started doing it, and then he started, like, loosening up. And then towards the end, I was able to, like, make him laugh and stuff. So it was cool being able to get to that point where it was, like, I was able to get him um, comfortable enough with the shoot. And then at the end, I was like, we don't have to do the interview. It's fine. We can do it another day. And he's like, no, I'm good. I can get over whatever. I'm, like my frustration, let's do it. And then interview came out pretty cool. Um, so it's, it's all a learning process and getting comfortable with these fighters. Cause obviously like that was the first time I met him. Like I had been texting him, but we hadn't met in person yet. So we, if you watch his vlog, like there's actually like the moment that we met and like that was the first time I had seen him in person. So it was getting comfortable with him during the shoot yeah. as well, while he's practicing. Oh my gosh. So like it's so fast paced too. Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm like in the gym, literally laying on their mats barefooted. And I'm like, oh my God, they're probably like, what is this girl? <laughs> I have like my two cameras like, yeah. But he loved the picture. So I was really excited. I was like, oh, thank God. So because oh, I feel like yeah that's such a different environment like to have to capture versus like somebody who's doing like an acting reel or something like that or headshots yeah. right um because yeah. it's so like y- you have to like have the perfect timing and it's yeah it's like really intense like angle wise and I'm so um yeah, and then like trying to be out of the way too and he's like you can come closer if you need to because the other guy was doing the vlog so I, it was a little more comfortable than the Eric Anders one because I wasn't the only one with the camera out. <laughs> but I was like okay so he he's he obviously does it uh Andrew Richness he's on um Instagram at AM Studio AM Visions so it's so funny I, like I have AM Studios he's AM Visions 
um, but he does Alex's vlog. So he kind of helped too with like, you can get closer and stuff. Just tell me if I'm in the way. So yeah. um, getting comfortable in that environment and then adjusting for the lighting and stuff. It's just, it's crazy and it's so fast paced. And it's like, at the end, I'm like, how did I even do that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Like, I'm just like grateful that I'm able to get That's it. That's so um, cool. Um, yeah. And um, gosh, I feel like I'm like, I feel like there's so much more we could talk about, but we'd be here for like ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what are you, what are your favorite things to write about? Um, still like your Ooh, okay. This is a good question. So I think my favorite is I love when I can talk about like how combat sports and MMA it can be empowering and I love like that whole aspect of like like just going beyond like the actual like fights or like things themselves and like how does it connect to like a broader purpose or how does it help this person um, in their life or for how does it you know how inspiring other people um, and I think that's definitely my favorite stuff to write about and to cover um because I know even like for myself how impactful like I think that's even like why I wanted to do it in the first place is like I was like oh my gosh this stuff is like so life-changing for me and helped me deal with so many things and I know that other people feel like the same way who have gotten into it but even like there's so many more I think there's so many more people that could be interested that just don't know about it or don't really understand it or, you know, just are like, oh, like, because that's how I used to think. I used to be like, oh, my gosh, like, who would, like, no, thank you. Like, who would, like, who would, yeah. like, want to do that? And it's so, like, violent, whatever. And. Yeah, like, you just see a little clip of it and it's like, oh, my God. It's, like, so barbaric. But then if you actually, like, read into it and, like watch the skill of these fighters and the heart that they put into it it's it's so much more than just that absolutely yeah and that and I think that whole thing is like that's my favorite thing to write about and you know and I think that that applies to like there's so many different stories that that falls under but that entire aspect of it it feels like the most personal and even like like how I got into it and why I started female fight fans and everything and even just like being able to um like just impact more people and I've had so many people even like email me um yeah after reading something and just telling me like how much they love the site or like how much this like that like they're being impacted by the content and it's so cool awesome. yeah it really is I'm like oh my god like someone's actually reading this mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> oh my god I feel the same way I'm like oh my god I should read it <laughs> right yeah. yeah so that's definitely like my favorite stuff to write about um yeah for sure and in terms of obviously you're not as much of a writer but like what is your favorite aspect of like what you cover or like is the stories that you publish um or the interviews you do like what's kind of your favorite aspect to talk about um I think it's really fun like the different kind of uh twists that we can put on the content of MMA um, <clears throat> we have one article coming out that's going to be really cool, and it's um, comparing uh, MMA fighters to a specific video game. I don't want to give too much out, but yeah, it's a really fun <laughs> article. And so, that so, then, so cool. Yeah, like combining like pop culture with MMA with beautiful visuals, because um, I'm getting some commission pieces from the artists that I, I covered a few, uh, I guess that was about a week ago. Um, and being able to shed light on those different kinds of connections and the different kind of connections like with that artist that I did the piece on, it, that's like one of my most viewed things and it's because his art's so amazing and being able to put uh, a person behind that because um, I feel like a lot of like photographers, they don't get, or, or artists, they don't get as much recognition, especially when a bunch of people yes. are sharing the pictures, but they don't tag them. Yep. It's like, I want to be able to give face to that, that person, shout that person out because I completely believe in like, Supporting artists, supporting photographers, supporting um, people who are putting really hard work into stuff and giving the credit where it's due. So um, being able to do those kinds of um, pieces are, are really, really fun to me. Yeah, I love that. Um, and I, I, I was so excited to see this video game piece already. <laughs> yeah. 
it's so cool. Um, it sounds it's awesome. so cool. Ah. It's kind of like a crossover. Like if if uh, MMA fighters won a video game. Oh, what character would yeah. Be? Oh my god, it's so fun. I think it's probably going to be coming out in a few weeks. I love that because I'm getting some pieces commissioned for it. Oh so. yes, and that's even like it's, there's like a psychology aspect of like archetypes that kind of falls into that. And oh yeah, mm-hmm. um, super it's excited to so read fun. it. It's so fun. I'm so excited just talking about it. I love that. Piece. Um, gosh, and I feel like, I, I'm like, I was trying to think of a good, like, question to end on, um, because I feel like there's so much more I want to ask you, and <laughs> there's, like, so much more we could cover. I know, we have so, I know, the article's gonna, our, our actual, like, transcription interview is gonna have so much more stuff. Yes, too, I know, and definitely well. everyone listening, make sure to read both of the interviews because we definitely like go a little bit deeper into things um and i think also it's just a different medium um and like offers a little bit of a different perspective but um i was like what is like i want to know like, what are your, like in terms of like overall not even like this year but just goal in terms of like mission or purpose like what's like if you can because I know like and I guess maybe I'll go first with my answer because I know like I and I know I said also in the article like for me like the biggest thing is like I know if I can like impact one person the way that like I was impacted like I will be fulfilled and feel like I did what I wanted to do um and that like all of all of like my work was worth it and um because like the way that I like kind of literally stumbled into MMA and like then saw how much it like changed my whole like way of thinking and just made me so much stronger as a person like I wanted to be able to give that to other people and especially women who um like feel the same way or struggling with mental illness or just don't have self-confidence or whatever the issue is like if I can like help them to like get rid of that and feel empowered like my job is done so like what is that for you in terms of like you know the thing where if you accomplish this as like a purpose um or a mission in your work like that you'll be satisfied or feel like you know you did what you wanted to do I feel like um there's there's two one for like the fan of me I would love for that to become like a forum with with women um connecting over fighting and uh, connecting over MMA in this crazy sport, um, being able to talk to other women, because I feel like we have maybe not that big of a difference in perspective, but it's different when you're talking to a woman about fighting versus when you're talking to a guy. And like, <laughs> it's I mean, for sure. like at any of my, <laughs> if you look at any of my Twitter mentions, it's like mansplaining like constantly. Like I could say something and it's like literally they'll just repeat what I said back to me and I'm like, yeah, that's what I meant. So girls actually listen and they actually like read and understand what I'm trying to say <laughs> instead of just being like, yeah, no, no, no. And it's like, yeah, thanks dude for backing me up. Like I literally just said that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, being able to give girls more uh, a bigger voice because we do have um, girl reporters and female reporters. And I mean, you see the way they get treated yeah. just based off the John Jones. Oh yeah, yeah right. Like, the most recent <laughs> thing. That's the kind of crap like we, we deal with often and probably... I wouldn't say more, but just as much in the MMA community because there are uh, an overpowering number of men uh, to girls on Twitter yes. and probably Instagram. So it's like um, being able to give those women voices and being able to highlight women who are talking about fighters, talking about female fighters because I feel like they get overlooked too. Yep. And, um, unless you're like gorgeous, you know, unless you're Runner LC, unless you're Paige Vincent, Aunt Rachel. Oscar. Right. So it's like. They, and a lot of times uh, I think those girls, too, get, like, too. extra pushes that, you know, like, girls who have earned it or in the sense of, like, they've proven themselves, they have, you know, they've won how many fights in a row, whatever, versus, like, you know, oh, these girls, like, the Rachel Ostevich and Paige Van Zandt thing, and it's kind of a double-edged sword, and I didn't mean to, like, go off on a tangent with this, but, and like, because, like, they're going to be on the main card in Brooklyn next week, right, and, like, it's cool because they're, like, women who are going to be on this main card and whatever, right, and there's going to be eyes on, like, women's mixed martial arts, but they're both kind of on, like, these losing streaks, and if anything, this is one of those fights where it's, like, you know, the loser's kind of fucked, uh, right? And it's one of those, like, who's... I don't think either of them are going to get cut, but, like, one of those where it's, like, ooh, who's going to get cut kind of fights where... 
Um, so it's like, do they, you know, is, do they really deserve like the placement that they're getting or any matchup? You know, like it's kind of one of those like, you know, like there is, or I think a reason behind that, which. So, and I, which I think isn't necessarily bad, but sort of, like, cheapens the, the message. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so, it's such a, a hard area to navigate, because it's like, um, maybe they are getting the spotlight, because they're both beautiful, or maybe they deserve it, you know, are we overlooking their, their skills? That's a good point, too. Because they're beautiful. Like, so, how do we navigate that line of, like, oh, it's because they're hot, versus, well, they put their heart and soul into this, too. Like, they train just as hard as the guys do. Rachel's been through hell recently, and it's like she's still able to fight. She's strong enough to fight. Paige has gone through that, too, like, terrible things in their lives that they've overcome to get to this point. So it's like, how do we navigate that? Like, we know it, they both deserve it because they are these fighters that put so much into it. But we also know, I mean, it's a debut ESPN card. We know... <laughs> you know, are also up there and i think on our other podcast we actually talked about it where yes yes oh my god yes Asian we did Asian. yeah and we were yeah, like, like, like oh, no. and that was where it was like oh this is like this crazy rumor like it's ever gonna happen and then <laughs> now it's <Yeah>. happening <laughs> and then it happens like of course it's so hard to know like oh god I don't even want to know what goes through these matchmakers' minds sometimes. Because, oh, like, wait. to put Greg Hardy on the stage, that's a well, whole... Well, speaking of, thing. that's what I was thinking, too. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember. I feel like that story died a little bit in the last couple of weeks. But, I'm like, next week, that's going to... Yeah, like, the, yeah. how is that whole thing going to play out? And, yeah. and just the sensationalism of, like, you know, and even, you know, is that strategic in terms of, like, yeah. are Getting they just... Any public exactly. publicity is, is it, publicity. Exactly. Which, honestly, probably because, you know, this is... The ESPN card, I mean, this is a big deal, and in terms of, like, this is going to kind of dictate the future of the UFC in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and, you know, just like the the first Fox card was a similar, although I wasn't into it at that point, so I didn't witness it, but looking mm -hmm. back, and I, like, it's a similar, they had a title fight, blah, 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 right? So, I'm sure that that's probably, like, a huge part of it, but, yeah, yeah it's so many... Me, it's like, who really wants to watch a Greg Hardy fight? Like, why? I know! Well, he that's another, like yes! Like, I'm not even, like, entertaining <laughs> the idea that he's, like, this amazing fighter. No, he's just a psycho. He just goes and he completely goes crazy. And then afterwards, you're like, oh, my God. And in my mind, the whole time, I'm thinking, he did this to a girl. Like, he did this to a woman. And how are we okay watching him yeah. fight when that's that's in your mind? At least at the back of your mind, if you're watching him fight. So, I don't, I don't even know how he's a, a factor. Ugh, I hate Greg Hardy. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right? Ugh. And yeah, and he's like, and the speaking of, like, he's called main event. Like, does not, do, um, I'm like, does that, he's, this is like his first yeah. UFC fight, and he's like, freaking called main event on this card. I'm like, yeah, yeah I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that he deserves that, but I, it is. I think it's, uh, any publicity is good publicity, so. For the UFC, they, yep. Whatever. They're all about money. And I'm sure it's going to help them get it. <laughs> For sure. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's bad, but, you know, is it good in the sense of, like, you know, is it going to, like, make more people watch? Probably. Is it going to... If they did this versus if they just did, like, a normal sort of card where it wasn't mm -hmm. drawn, like, you know, is it going to bring people in that wouldn't be in? And even, like, I, I even think about, like, you know, as it, like, because my whole mission is kind of to bring people in who wouldn't be interested. Although, like, my approach is different. It's the same sort of, like, end goal. So, it, I even ask myself sometimes, like, a de devil's advocate kind of thing of, like, okay, like, is the impact, could it potentially, you know, still be, a po like, a net positive in terms of, like, what happens in the aftermath? Are more people going to get into MMA this way beyond just, like, the sensationalism of, like, this particular card and story but yeah it but it's still at like at what price right yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a bad know. message that, that, would too. Be a, that would be a whole different podcast i know <laughs> <laughs> i can go on and on about this so i'll, I'll refrain me too <laughs> so yeah talk a little bit more about it so i know okay, back to our question uh yes. what's my end goal with unknown mma so um i had already said about fem mma and going back to unknown mma um my goal is to highlight the humanity of fighters and like to show that they're not just these uh 
people that are just barbaric and stuff and that they are they have families they have quirks about themselves like whenever I ask the what's the thing that you don't um really get to talk about like during interviews and I really like Diego was like I love riding motorcycles and I didn't know that about him so it's like being able to bring that to the table too because I know we get caught up sometimes in um seeing these fighters like oh I don't like him I don't know why I just don't like him and yeah. then if you know who he is as a person I think the embedded helps do that a lot with you see yes. um, the embedded episodes because you see them as a person and being able to see that side is like okay like I get it, you know? Totally. And, and it gives a little bit more of, like, okay, I could focus more on, like, the technical skill rather than, oh, I just want to see this guy be, get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think showing that side to people is really um, fun for me. And both also with my pictures, too, I feel like my portraits are able to show a different side uh, of fighters that we don't see. We don't see the fighters in training and stuff and being able to take those pictures are really fun. Yeah, I love that. That's a good answer. Um, and, like... I think that's so important, like, the humanity side. I totally agree about Embedded. I feel like that was... Um, I saw this comment on YouTube that was, like, whoever, like, whoever's idea was to create Embedded should, like, the UFC should, like, <laughs> like give, yeah. like, millions of dollars to him. Like, yeah, definitely agreed. Um, so, I love that. Um, yeah. And definitely, let's... Uh, like shout out our links and everything um, yeah. for sure so tell everyone like where they can follow you where they can find the site um, and if you wanted like say like your own Instagram and everything too um, yeah so our website is unknownmma.com and then uh, if you want to find me on Twitter I'm at Manda Nicole with a 3 instead of an E so it's Manda N-I-C-O-L 3 oh it's so frustrating to type out <laughs> <laughs> then, um, my, yeah my instagram is amanda and sanchez so if you want to follow me on all that go ahead and uh what about you Erin? so for me um everything is female fight fans so it's femalefightfans.com and then we're on twitter instagram and facebook but really like instagram is kind of our main platform um at yeah. female fight fans for everything and then for me my personal instagram is at erin mckell which is spelled m-c-k-e-l-l-e -L -L -E. um i think like l magazine with a mick in front of it that's how you spell it um yeah so that's where you can find me and all of my stuff Okay, well, thank you, Erin. I had a lot of fun talking with you. Thanks. We need to I do too. More often because I feel like we could have kept talking for like. I know. <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm like maybe we should do like a like after the Brooklyn card, we should do like a recap yeah. of because really oh, that whole gosh, topic. Yes. I'm like, yeah, we could have kept going like forever on that because yeah, there's just so much. I feel like there's just so many things to say and like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so much to get into. But, okay, thank you, and we will talk soon. Thank you. Yes, okay. we will. And thanks, okay. everyone, for listening. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Be shocked if this fight went the distance. Unknown MMA. Everything you don't know about MMA.